spoken over your family, what's been spoken over your relationships, there's nothing impossible for God. Amen. Hey, listen, before we're seated this morning, why don't you take a moment to look at the person to your right, the person to your left, tell them good morning, and you can be seated. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's great having you with us this morning. It's wonderful having you here, those of you that are watching online. My name is Paul Fosley, and I'm pastor in Naples Church, and it's a pleasure having you here. Uh, in a minute, we're going to watch a few announcements, but one of the things I just want to make you aware of, uh, if, it, if you are a guest here, please, please grab the welcome card in the chair back in front of you, fill it out, go to our welcome center on the right-hand side, and we have people there that will give you some information because God, about the church, because God does have a church he wants to be a part of. And one thing I just ask is, please, come at least three times. That's what I want to challenge you, you know, before you make a decision. Uh, it's important that you do that because you just can't get to know us after one visit. So it's great having you here today. And I also just want to say thank you for your continual faithful support of the church. Uh, my wife and I are so, so grateful for your continued support. And if you're new here, my wife's actually on the, uh, playing the keyboards today. And so... You know, just want to say thank you for what you're doing and your support because, you know, we can't do it without you. As you know, the church is growing and, you know, we're doing everything we, you know, can to make it um, easier coming and going. And, and, but I just always want to remember this one thing. How I many know oh, God is more important than Disney World?
Wow. A little worried there. How many know he's more important than football? <laughs> Just so you know, my Vikings are one and four, so football doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it's, it's done. It's over. I'm going to root for the Packers, maybe. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. But, um, you know, and, and I just want to put things in perspective. And, oh, other thing to remind you of. How many know season is upon us? Have you seen the cars, trucks, or things coming back? You know, the haulers? How many know in season, if you want to go to dinner, you know you're going to wait sometimes an hour? How is it that we'll wait an hour for food and we get upset waiting 10 minutes to get out of the church parking lot. Should I preach to this half of the church or this half of the church? I just want to put things in perspective. God's word is worth anything you give up. And a few minutes is a few minutes. Amen? Amen. And so let's just keep that in perspective. But we still want to do what we can, you know, to help. And so and your giving and everything you do is to get lives changed, to help people find Jesus, to see people come to the Lord. And so your giving is vital to that. Uh, but so just so you know, you know, as one of the things we're doing, if you came in, you might have noticed up in the corner here some green cones. So we have uh, next week the new exit. Hopefully by next Sunday, the new exit will be ready. And it's only an exit to go out to Mulder, and then you can turn and go up to Immokalee. So we will have the back one entrance to Rock Road, where the police are going to be, where they'll stop the traffic so you can get across. The middle out, you know, the, the normal one, and then uh, we'll have the third one that you can also able to go straight across or just turn and go out into the state. So we're working on that, but we can't do it without you. And I just want to say thank you because it's just one other thing to help us continue to grow and meet the needs of the city. Amen? And how many know God wants to bring revival to the city? But let's let revival start in us. Amen? So thank you for all you do. Thank you for your giving. Just thanks for being a part of Naples Church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word of God that it brings truth in life. We thank you just for the Holy Spirit to bring comfort to us today, to bring revelation to us today. Help us to learn to pray effectively today. Help us to learn to pray in faith today because prayer has to be the centerpiece of our life. As one minister said, learning to pray is more important than getting an education. Not that an education isn't important, but it's prayer that changes things. It's prayer that God answers us. And so help us to learn today in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Naples Church. My name is Raquel and I am so excited that you are here with us today. If it's your first time, look at the seat back in front of you and grab a welcome card. Take a moment to fill it out and bring it to our welcome center at the end of our service today. We would love to say hi. Get ready Naples Church because Sunday, November 5th is going to be a big day around here. God is doing amazing things in our services and lives are being changed. So we need to make room for what God has in store next. Beginning Sunday, November 5th, we will have four Sunday morning services. Our new service times will be 8.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 10.45 a.m., and noon. So whether you're an early riser or you prefer a later start, there's a service just for you. Spread the word, mark your calendar, and get ready for what God is about to do. We can't wait to see you at our new service times on November 5th. But that's not the only exciting thing happening on November 5th. It's time for our biggest outreach of the year, Mission Christmas. Mission Christmas is our toy drive benefiting Salvation Army. After church on Sunday, November 5th, we will meet at the Target on Immokalee Road between 1 and 4 p.m. to buy toys to donate to Salvation Army. These toys will be distributed to families in our community who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford a Christmas present for their kid. Your generosity, whether one toy or a whole cartful, 
helps ensure that a child will get a present on Christmas morning. This is an outreach we can all be a part of, and we want you to be involved. So join us at Target on November 5th and make a difference in a child's Christmas this year. If you are not able to come to Target with us, you can donate towards Mission Christmas and we will go shopping for you. Simply mark your gift, Mission Christmas, or if you're giving online, select Mission Christmas from the list of funds. November 5th is going to be an exciting day, but that's not all we have coming up. Don't forget, tonight is our Naples Young Adult Service. This Friday is our worship night, and Saturday we have a men's breakfast. To stay up to date on all the ways that you can be involved, visit NaplesChurch.com or our new Naples Church app. Have a great day, y'all. Bye. Amen. So we have a lot going on at the end of the year, amazing things. And so I want to share just a few of them and, and you know, more about what we're doing. And don't look at this time, these next few minutes as just announcements. This is vision. This is who we are. One of our values is go outside. One of our values is everybody does the dishes. And we're not going to reach the community if we're not serving and if we're not getting people into the kingdom of God, amen? And Jesus met needs multiple ways. Jesus met needs naturally when he fed the 5,000, when he fed 4,000, when he sent his disciple to you know, get the tax and he went fishing and got, you know, there was money in the fish. Now, wouldn't that be awesome, all you guys, if you could fish and, and pay your taxes that way? That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, Jesus, Jesus knew many times how important it is that he cares about community and helping people. And he also, as you know, wants to take care of people spiritually. But church, this church, if, if we weren't here tomorrow, this community should miss us. That's how you know you're being effective. They should miss us. There should be things that the church should come to your to your, I mean, the world, you know, your city should come to your aid based on, if, if it needed, based on what we do. And so we're, our biggest outreach coming up, we've been doing this outreach for Salvation Army for years. And we like Salvation Army because they're a Christian-based organization. They vet all their people. And we've waited to do this outreach until December. So we thought, you know, we're gonna look and changing it this year. So we asked them because Last year, we had 2,600 gifts given last year, okay? We had, over, we had over 600 people show up Sunday after church to go into Target. We all had our Naples shirts on that say, I love my church, and we're going to give them away free again. We want you to get them. But this is the biggest outreach to our city and to help people in need that we do all year, and it's Salvation Army. And so because they get so many gifts from us, it makes them challenged to, and it's only two weeks before Christmas, they are thrilled we're doing it in November. So we're the largest donation they get of gifts every year. Not money-wise, but over the years, maybe not every year, but they'll tell us that the amount of gifts they get is usually the largest from us. And just like the blood drive that's coming up, we had over, we hit our goal of 100, amen? Now, if you gave last time, guess what? We, we spaced it out. I think you can give again. <laughs> so we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, that's what we're about. We're about taking your blood here, okay? <laughs> and giving it away. It's awesome. But remember, it's helping our community and they need to restock their, their supplies. And so that's why they're gonna be coming frequently because they'll go to big organizations like Arthrex and different companies. They don't even get a handful of what we give. Guys, it's amazing. They love us. You know, I mean, they, they just, they, they love us. And so sign up for that and help. But this is how the, we reach our community. This is how we change lives. And so if you've never been part of Salvation Army, we're just gonna show you that outreach 
We want you to start putting your money away. You don't have to eat Chick-fil-A till the Salvation Army Outreach. Quit, quit supporting that Christian organization because it just feeds you. I'm just kidding. But let's become ready. Now, let me say one thing before I show you the video. So many of us in this room, we're all at different levels financially. What's great about this outreach is this. If you can only buy one toy, you can still be a part. It's not about the amount, it's about community. It has nothing to do with how much. It's having to do, you are God's vessel that day. And remember when the little, when the, the widow, Jesus, one time Jesus looked at what people were giving. Jesus looked down, saw a widow, a widow they call it the widow mite. It was less than half a penny she gave, and Jesus said she gave more than all. Every wealthy person who came that day when he watched, she gave more than anybody because for her, what she gave was truly a sacrifice. It was something she would miss. And that's why Jesus said, so it doesn't, you just need to understand. When we all do it, God moves amazing. And it's a great outreach. So guys, you just want to show that real quick? Did you know that Naples Church has partnered with the Salvation Army for over five years to serve our community at Christmas? We've been coming together with a single aim, to serve our community right here in Collier County. Here are some key details about our beloved outreach. Every single toy donated remains in Collier County, directly uplifting our neighbors and local children. With the Salvation Army by our side, we've seen the enormous impact of our collective efforts. To put it into perspective, we've donated over 4,200 toys in just the previous two years alone. While the gifts bring immediate smiles, our deeper mission is to spread love, hope, and the message that someone believes in them. It's all about letting each individual know that they are valued, especially during the holiday season. So with the season of giving just around the corner, will you make a difference with us? We warmly invite you to be part of Mission Christmas this year. Together, we can continue this tradition of love, service, and community spirit. Amen. Amen. We all can do our part, and we just want to invite you. And we have so many things coming up, important dates. We're going to give you a magnet to put on your fridge as you go. Christmas services this year. Uh, we have five services that we're going to do, and so the, the time is on that. And because it's on a Sunday, we're going to do five services on that day. And then with time change coming up, I just want to really encourage you. Um, do you guys know first service, I love you more than anybody else? Right? You know that, right? You know, I, just, I do. I just, and, 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 and this is why I, I really, I love everybody, but I just have fun with you guys. But I do believe you're going up first in the rapture. <laughs> um, you really, you, I can't tell you how much you coming for service helps us grow. And when we go to 8.30, I can't tell you how important that is. Because right now, you know, our late service are the, the busiest for our families. And as we grow, the things that we, why, we're, why we did the structure this way is those three services, we need the space to grow because usually first service is, is our, our people. But the next three will be when people will come to visit. But not only that, we need three services where families, our, youth, our children's area, has plenty of space to grow. And, and so in here, when we get full, we can manage. There, it's another story. We got to expand. And this is where as we go into the the season so we can continue to, to grow, to help people and do all those different things. Please be a part of what we're doing. So let's look at Living Empowered. Um, they sing that song about dry bones. And, and, and I would guess that most of you in this room don't know the story about the bones, the guy being thrown on the dry bones and living again. 
I would guess most of you don't know that story of how that happened. And I just want to say this at the beginning because it's so important for you to realize God can redeem what we've lost, what's died in your life, whatever that you've had a marriage, a relationship. And when I say die, something that's ended, okay, that it, your emotions have ended, things in your life have whatever it is, you feel like it's at an end. And you just always wonder, how can that come back to life? And so Elijah's tomb, you know, uh, those things are sacred, but there was a war going on, and these two, you know, they, they were, basically, I'm giving you the nutshell of the story. Two of the army guys, one guy was dead, and they were hiding, and these guys were hiding, and they took guy that had died and, and put him in the cave. And it was Elijah's cave. Is it Elisha or Elijah? Elijah, right? And, and when he landed on his bones, this is the nutshell of the story. You can read the details. I'm a guy. I'm just giving you the high points. I'm sure I'm... I'm guys, how many know we miss details no matter what? <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure I will. So I'm just giving you the, the, the big picture. Threw the body on the bones and he came back to life. Now, stop and think about that, how much of God's power was still in his body that when he landed on his bones, he rose, came back to life. And from a natural standpoint, you would say that's impossible. That's why I love God, because he knows how to redeem impossible. Amen? Just trust him. And don't try and figure it out. Because I don't know about you, but I'm guessing when those guys went to hide and they just were going to bury him and get, you know, and put him in there, they weren't thinking he was going to come back to life. And God knows how to do that. And prayer brings things back to life in our life. And it's important that we pray. It's important we know how to pray. And that's why we've been looking at faith. And you're going to have to go back and watch those messages if you haven't. But John 16 says this. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Everyone say whatever. Now, how many know your kids put tones on that word and roll their eyes, whatever? That's not word. That's whatever you need. What's in your life? Whatever it is. You can ask God. And he'll give you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name, asking you will receive that your joy may be full. God wants you joyful. God wants you joyful. And when you come on the four services, you come for service at 8.30, you're gonna make me really joyful. (laughs) Amen, so. But the disciples were with Jesus up until this time, so if they needed things, they just asked him in person. But how many know Jesus, we all can't ask Jesus in person. It's impossible. And that's why Jesus said, I have to go because there's a greater one, the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna give you. And now the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us. So when we pray, actually, we can look inside. That's where God is. Not just up on the throne. God lives in us. That's why when we need things and and we're hurting, we can just talk to him. And he's right there. But Jesus said, I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. I'll always be with you. But you haven't needed to ask. But now I'm going to go. So when I go, now everybody will be able to ask in my name, ask the Father what we need. And so when you look at prayer and manners of prayer, I'm just going to cover two quick ones, and then if I have time, I'm going to go over another hindrance to prayer. If you were here two weeks ago when I talked about this, last week I was in Ohio for a, a, a minister's meeting, and I went to a church there, and yeah, you know, it's about probably two, three times bigger than ours. And I just want you to know how much I love our church because how many know small towns don't have the conveniences of big towns? So when I flew in, all the rental cars were, places were closed. And so I had to do, I had to Uber the whole time I was there. Thank God for Uber, I'm just telling you right now. But on Sunday when I went to church, I had to, I waited 50 minutes to, for, for an Uber guy to come and pick me up. And this is a large church and I'm sit, waiting at the door. Do you know not one person asked me for help or asked why I was sitting there? Just a couple of them said hi. 
But I'm there after, there was lots of people that left after the rush. And it was very evident I was sitting there for a reason. Not one person asked me. I am so glad Naples Church is not that way. You guys are amazing. And then why growth track is so important part of your life. Monday I was at the minister's meeting and, and it was over. And it was a big, big room. And there was probably 200 chairs. There was probably 100 tables. Maybe there was more, you know, I don't know. But I guess you could figure it out, but I'm not going to figure out the math right now. It was a lot. And I'm talking to a friend of mine from Bible school that I hadn't seen since Bible school, since 1988. And we're just talking, and, and my eyes are always watching. And so sometimes I, it's just... I'm sorry when I'm talking to you if, if, if I'm looking because I'm always noticing what's going on around. And it's just me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm watching out of the periphery of my eyes and I'm seeing two ladies tearing down this whole room. And there was a bunch of people there on staff that were there. The sound team was there and everything. And I'm watching them just leaving. And I'm watching these two ladies tear down these tables, stacking these chairs eight high, and there are big, like these chairs, they're big and they're heavy. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, I wish you would hurry up and quit talking because I gotta help. And that's what was going through my head because our value is everybody does the dishes and I do the dishes everywhere. Guys, I do it everywhere. And I'm sitting here watching this and so we finally end and I walk over and I start helping and they looked at me like, I just, I don't know, like I, I'm, there's something wrong with me. I know a lot of you think that, but shh, right now it's, just keep it to yourself. And, and I started helping, they're like, you don't need to do this. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, I have to do this. And I said, because one of our values at our church is everybody does the dishes. And and I said, not only that, I said, but if my wife was here, I wouldn't have an option. <laughs> She'd be like, go help. And I said, but not only would I help, she would help. And she goes, I wish you would talk to our staff. I wish, and about three times they asked, what was that value? I said, everybody does the dishes. Oh yeah, okay, that, that's a great value. Well, and I'm watching people come and go. Now, eventually, about 20 minutes later, some people started helping, but maybe they felt guilty. I don't know. But this church is massive. It's 200,000 square feet. No elevator. And they have this huge second story. Guess where the tables had to go? <laughs> and... So we go, over and, and these ladies would have had to do it. And I'm like, this is crazy. Now, thank God people showed up and, and helped. But this is why it's so important, why we have to be a place where love works. We, church isn't just being aware of us. Church is being aware of all of us and being aware that people need Jesus even here more than ever. But the church just doesn't happen Sunday in these next 10 minutes. This hour, we should be the church every single day. And these values should resonate in our lives. And so with that, though, how many know life can throw curveballs? Reminds me of a story of a young man. He was a phenomenal baseball player in high school. Got, a, got you know... A scholarship, went to college, phenomenal player in college. He got drafted by a major league team. He was going through, you know, got in the triple A, you know, double A, you know, single A, double A, triple A. He was making his way up to the, to the big leagues. He gets to the big leagues and the guy just completely crashes. And, you know, as, and over the time, his mom would be writing him letters. How's it going? He goes, oh, it's going great. Looks like I'm going to get moved up, you know. And so, you know, I got moved up to this league, this class, blah, blah, blah. And, hey, I made it to the big leagues. And so 
the mom kept writing him and just saying, hey, how's it going? He goes, oh, not so good. I don't know. It's a little harder than I thought. And, and so finally, mom, he gets, the boy sends a letter back to his mom. He says, mom, I got, I got demoted. I didn't make it in the big leagues. And so she wrote back and said, why? He said, because they started throwing curveballs. And if you don't know what a curveball is, there's pitchers that serve, they, they can spin the ball in it. It curves, and they can sink it, and they do all that. This guy could hit fastballs really well. But once it started to go off of what was normal, he couldn't make it. That's life. We have to keep going. One of the questions at the conference I was at, it says, what do you want to be known for at the end of your life? And he said, write one word to help you focus on what you want. To fin- what you want. And, and I was sitting there, and the only word I could come up with is this, was the word finish. I want to finish. And here's the thing about finishing. You know, I rem- the, 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 the two guys that we're speaking are our mentors. They're both going to be here next year. And they're going to minister. And, 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 he, and one of the things he talked about, he was talking to this guy uh, um, in, in his church. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go do this. It's like everything's lining up. So I know it's God's will. And he goes, boy, I wish I knew if everything lined up was God's will because I've never had anything line up in my life. And if you look at the Apostle Paul, things never lined up in his life. If you look at Jesus' life, things never lined up in his life. If you go based on everything's good and that's God's will, you'll never be in God's will because the Apostle Paul was never in God's will. He always had troubles. He always had problems. He always had things coming against him. And here's the thing about Christianity. That's why God said, I give you the Holy Spirit. I give you my word. I will be with you through all the curveballs, through all the problems in life, and I'm going to be your staff, okay? I'm going to be your strength. I'm going to be your support. I'm going to be not just the staff for stability, but the rod for protection. And that's why God says he's going to help us. He's going to be with us. He's going to watch us through because if you're waiting for everything to be perfect, those of you that are single, if you're waiting for everything to be perfect before you get married, you're going to never get married because it's never perfect. It will never just be right. That's why we need faith and that's why we need to pray. But this is the, one of the greatest prayers that we can make is called the prayer of commitment. And that isn't being that prayer of commitment is not a prayer of, oh, I gotta be more committed to Jesus. You know what the prayer of commitment is? It's committing your cares to him. This is where the Bible says, and if we don't learn this principle, it's going to overwhelm us, and we're going to have a hard time finishing. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your care upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Do we have any fishermen in here? About three of you? Any of you have gone fishing? Let me ask you a question. When you cast, do you reel back in? Do you know what we do? Lord, take this. We reel back in. See, when we cast, we cast it away from us and leave it. We don't reel it back in. Cast your care. And you say, Lord, I'm casting, I'm throwing this at your feet, and I'm not going to take it back. Now, can I tell you there's some things I've reeled back in for days? Took me a while to finally be able to leave it at his feet. But the greatest time is when you can leave it there and just say, Lord, you're in charge. I can't worry about this new job. I can't worry about... You know, Lord, you told me to serve. You told me to get involved. I'm going to serve, and you're, I'm not going to worry about how you're going to work everything else out. 
Ladies, some of you just need to cast your spouse. (laughs) You mean cast and leave him? I can divorce him? No, you're taking it too literal. Not like that. But we all need to just cast these cares and let God work on people. I've learned in my life, when I let God work on my wife, it's way better than me trying to work on my wife. And trust me, that goes more her way to me. And, and let the Holy Spirit do his work. Let the Holy Spirit help. The Amplified says this, casting the whole of your care. Everyone say the whole. Say all of it, the full amount. Well, Lord, I'll give you 50%, but you know, no, you got to give it all. You got to give it all to him. And you'll be amazed at what God will do. But he says, casting the whole of your care, look at all your anxieties. Turn to your neighbor and say, quit making me so anxious. No, don't do that, don't do that. Look at this one, all your worries. Any worries in here? Any worries? Don't raise your hands. Three of you? No. We'd all raise our hand. We all worry at times, but there's people that are really chronic worriers. And you got to get over that. It'll hinder your prayers. All your concerns, any of you have concerns? Give them to him. Well, how's this going to work out? I don't know. But it will. But it will. This is where faith comes in. You got to trust him. It will work out. And one thing I've learned with the Lord, it usually doesn't happen by Friday. But it happens. He works it out. He works it out. And then it says, all your concerns once and for all. That means we don't take it back. You're going to be tempted to take it back. You're going to have thoughts to take it back. That's not sin. That's not taking it back. We all get those thoughts. It's if you think on it and speak it and you take it back and now you let that weigh you down. Now it's affecting you again. But we got to cast it out. Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. Now, to me, sustain doesn't mean immediate. I've had immediate miracles. I love them, but most of the time, God sustained me. It was a process. And he shall sustain you. And look at this. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. Now, the Amplified says, cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it. You know, my wife always says this. How do you know when you've forgiven somebody? It's when you can remember it with peace. You have peace over when you think of their name, you get anxious. Or you get mad. Or you get upset. Because you're always going to remember, unless God supernaturally wipes that from your brain. But you're... All of us have people that have hurt us and done things. It's when you can remember with peace without any inner commotion happening. And so when we can cast our cares, it doesn't mean you're not going to think about it. It's not going to be out there. You just have peace and no inner commotion knowing God's working. Does that make sense? You know God's working. You know he's working. Then he goes on to say, he will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. We have an amazing God, don't we, everybody? And I just want to encourage you this week, whatever you're, what's ever inside, what's ever going on, what's ever happening, whatever is is bringing you worries and concerns and making you anxious or scared just see yourself in your pr- when you go to him in prayer and just see yourself and just whether it's casting a fishing rod throwing it 
just getting it off. It'd be like taking my vest and taking it off and just throwing it on the ground. Okay, I'm not wearing it anymore. And I'm not going to walk back and pick it up and put it on. And if you're tempted to start picking it up, throw it down. Say, nope, in Jesus' name, God's taking care of it. I'm not going to allow this worry to keep coming back on me. And you might have to do that four or five, six times a day at first. And you, you'll finally get to the point where you can see that vest on the ground and you can walk by it and go, my God's good. He's taking care of it. I'm not going to pick it up. He's going to help me. And this is an important prayer. This is, uh, this is a prayer we need to pray. God, I give it to you. I cast it on you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You're working this out. I don't know how, but you're working it out. I don't know how you're going to bring in the extra income, but you're going to work it out. I don't know how you're going to change the situation, but you're going to work it out. I'm not going to carry this anxiety, Lord. I'm not going to let it affect my relationships. I'm not going to let it affect my days. I'm just going to give you my anxiousness. Amen? Bow your heads and close your eyes as we close. Lord wants us to be free in this room. And I want to pray right now and I want, I want you to just sit there and think of one thing that's overwhelming you. What's one thing that you're struggling with? Whether it's a care, whether it's a weight, whether it's a fear, anxiousness, sorrow, your cares. And as you're sitting there, I want you to see your heavenly father or Jesus standing in front of you. And I just want you now to hand it to him and just give it to him. And I want to see yourself backing up and walking away and turning and leaving him. And then from this moment on, I want to challenge you never to go back and take it from them again. You're going to be tempted. You're going to want to. You're going to feel like it. And maybe you're, you do. And you just go right back to him and give it back. Heavenly Father, right now, we just cast our cares upon you in the name of Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. You hear our prayers today. You, you love our lives. You're concerned for us. You want to help every area, whether it's a a small concern or a big concern. You, want, you care about every aspect of our lives. So Lord, we give this to you. We put it in your hands. When it's in your hands, you're taking care of it. When it's in our hands, then we only have us and we know we're not good enough, smart enough. You know how to take care of it way better than we ever could. And we know you're going to, the outcome will be good. And so we just give this to you now in the name of Jesus. And with every head bowed and eye closed, I just want to make sure everyone in this room knows heaven is your eternal home. The greatest peace you will ever, ever have is when you know your sins are forgiven. And if you passed away, you know heaven is your eternal home. At the end of people's lives, the greatest fear that I've seen in rooms are people who don't know what's happening at where they're going at the end of their lives. And there's such a fear and worry and unsettledness because inside of us, we all really know there's a heaven. The Bible says God puts it there in each person. We all know. So if you're here today and you don't know 100% heaven is your eternal home, I'd love to pray for you. Because the Bible says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, we'll be forgiven, and that's how salvation comes. And so no one looking around, but I'm going to ask you in a second to raise your hand. Those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the raising of your hand is your voice, God seeing you making your decision.
to follow him and ask for forgiveness. So if that's you, you say, Pastor, I'd like to pray with you. No, no one looking around, but I'm going to look from your right to your left. And if that's you, just lift your hand right now in Jesus' name. And if there's anyone here, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Who else? Thank you over here. Thank you very much. Another hand over here. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. All right, now I want to lead you all in a prayer. And those of you online, if you'll pray this, the Bible says if you believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord will forgive you and you'll become, as what we call, a, a Christian that is born again, that knows you're forgiven and has your eternal home. So would everybody say this with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you today and ask for forgiveness of all my sins. I make a decision today to believe in Jesus. My sins are forgiven because I've asked him to be my Lord and I've believed it in my heart. So not only are my sins forgiven, but I'm a child of God and heaven is my eternal home. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give a round of applause to those that lifted their hands?